How I survived 10 hour shifts as a SOC analyst, night shifts included. I actually did not. This is just a ghost that's stuck in purgatory that is expressing itself through YouTube channels. This is an AI kind of generated image. <laughs> I'm a soul stuck in purgatory that is expressing itself through the use of AI. No, but seriously, just a lot of coffee. Hey guys, Forever Anonymous, cybersecurity professional, and today we're going to be talking about SOC analyst shifts, how to survive the longer shifts. This is for people, obviously, who maybe this is their, their transition, their first actual career. I know for me, uh, before becoming a SOC analyst, I had jobs, but I wasn't in a career, right? It was, I worked at... Uh, fast food place. Oh, apologize for that. I got a phone call. I worked at a fast food place and then I worked kind of at this sales tech kind of job and all of those, well, the sales job was a part-time and the job before that wasn't really demanding. So this might be people's first actual, you know, career, somewhat demanding job. I also have some military experience, so <laughs> it's why I kind of laugh is like, these shifts really aren't that bad. Like when you come from a military background, you've had a bad shift, <laughs> like you know bad shifts. Uh, but I understand that to the general populace, these shifts can be a lot, and especially if it's your first kind of career. I know that there's a few people that I've worked around where I can tell this is their first time kind of actually working and so i just wanted to create this video to discuss some ways that you can you know get through it and adjust to that new um, work life balance so depending on your background whenever you become a SOC analyst you might feel like you have something to prove and we all come from different types of backgrounds and you know for reasons that we may be doing that but you might want to just be showing this company, hey, I'm the best at this. I'm going to pick up all these alerts and do the best I can. And that's great. It is great to pick up every type of alert and learn them deeply and thoroughly and kind of uh, critique the way you do things and the way you go about investigating certain alert types. Okay, so... It is good, but burnout is such a real thing. And I have to say, and if you have good management, they've already told you this, or you've heard it amongst your coworkers is pace yourself, right? You don't have to do it all by yourself and you can still learn a lot and show how great you are through pacing yourself and just doing things a lot slower, right? So when you complete an alert, take a few minutes to yourself go for a lap, go for a walk, okay, whatever it is, and have a drink, maybe have a snack, okay? There could be times where you're picking up alerts back to back to back, but I would say cap that at like three alerts, okay? After three alerts back to back, go for like a, you know, five to eight minute, 10 minute maybe, just walk, just relax, take some time to yourself, because ultimately, Pushing yourself too much will actually ret uh, have diminishing returns, which means the you work so hard that your work actually starts to lose quality, right? So if you pace yourself and you start to take, you know, smaller breaks here and there, it will improve your work quality overall. And I know it might not feel like your work will have an impact or your... Um, not wanting to take a break won't have an impact on your work, but given a span of time, it will have an impact, okay? If you're always pushing yourself for weeks on end, it will impact your work eventually. You might be able to do it in short stints of time. You might feel like you have to because it's busier. Regardless, I would say even if it is busier, you still need to take the time. In fact, it it's probably most important to do it then because 
you feel overwhelmed by a lot of work, okay, the workload. So, yeah, the biggest thing is just to pace yourself, focus on doing the best work that you can do, and take breaks frequently, okay? So that's my first piece of advice. My next piece of advice, and this one is neither here nor there, okay? It depends on the type of person you are, but a lot of times it does help to just talk to your coworkers, you know, and this kind of is in the same vein of my previous point of taking breaks. But with this is take breaks and speak with your coworkers, right? It always is a morale boost to just, I don't know, crack some jokes with them or just have friendly banter, whatever it is. It, it does increase the morale of your team, of yourself, and it will show in the alerts that you work. It could also open up avenues for change, right? If you're at work, obviously you're gonna be talking about work and it could get brought up that you and a coworker or two have the same kind of dilemma or problem with a certain alert type and working together, you guys can come to a conclusion on how to properly investigate that alert, or maybe there's some changes that need to happen um, with the interface between you and the alerts that you can speak with your manager about to get that uh, change facilitated to just increase and improve your workflow. And the last thing, this, <laughs> I could have put quite a few things here, but this is relatable. This is real. Man, drink some coffee. <laughs> if if that's your thing, if you are okay with consuming caffeine, I remember for a long time, I was not okay with consuming caffeine. I I didn't drink coffee until I got into this profession, actually. And now I love it. I used to, I used to hate it. But, man, drink some coffee. <laughs> okay, I have about two coffees a day when I'm in office. I have one in the morning. Of course, I drink water first. You always need to introduce introduce your body to water is like the first thing but of course all that happens at home i get to the office i have a cup of coffee black coffee straight strongest it can be okay and i get i get into it it just it, it puts me right into flow it's great it is great and then i have another one like maybe three hours afterwards and then i just kind of ride that out and and that's that's it you guys that's three tips i have for working these longer shifts um, and these same tips can be brought over into the night shift for sure and yeah if you guys have any questions or maybe you have suggestions yourself feel free to put them in the comments below love to read them as always so if you've watched this far and you found the video valuable feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you're new thank you for watching